in Trinidad and Tobago as uh, we talk about management of the economy or workers and job security very much on the table given the difficult economic times and the amalgamated workers union will next meet with the CPO the chief personal officer on Monday to settle outstanding negotiations on behalf of the Port of Spain City Corporation the union says they have a unique approach in dealing with the matter given the economic hardships that the country is facing. The union also says that the health and safety conditions are unacceptable. And to give us some, some broader context of the discussion, we are joined now by three uh, representatives from the Amalgamated Workers' Union. Uh, we have with us closer to me, Cassandra Tommy de Brea, General Secretary of the organization. The gentleman in the middle is Michael Prentice, President. Uh, general of uh, the Amalgamated Workers. And if you're saying this person looks familiar, Ram Kumar Narayan Singh, the Chief Labor Relations Officer, he was formerly with the uh, Steel Workers Union uh, and is now uh, involved with the Amalgamated Workers Union. Uh, good morning to you all. Good to have you yes, on, the, on the program with us uh, this morning. Uh, Michael Prentice, let, let me just ask you, what, what is the, the key issue that we're talking about here? Uh, what, what are the, the main concerns of, of the union? Well, the main concern at this point in time, for as you and good morning to Trinidad and Tobago, has to deal, deal with the fact that um, we have a lot of outstanding matters that are before us at this point in time. It's not just about the dollars and cents at the end of the day. It, it must be more than that. Because we're very well aware and understand that if the country is going through a dilemma at this time, one which all of us regret at this point in time, but one which we must come together as a people and as workers across the spectrum in order to bring about the changes that is required. I fully aware of the fact that um, the country is not in a good place. The country is not in a place where so many people want so much and the country is not in a position to afford to give people all what they want. But we believe that if we all hold hands together as a people and sit around the table objectively and, and, and in a rational manner, I believe that we can save Trinidad and Tobago from the dilemma it is now finding itself. And before I bring the General Secretary into the discussion, let, let me hear from Ram Kumar Narayan Singh, because you've had the, the, the upsetting experience of ArcelorMittal and all that <coughs> that went on in relation to that, and, and the, the government uh, maintaining that it could not get involved because of the, the legal issues. What, what, if you're talking about innovative ways of dealing with labor relations in extremely difficult economic times, what, what are the key issues uh, in, in this particular negotiation? Well, to start with, at the beginning of this year, what this union did was extend an olive branch, so to speak. We wrote all the different organizations we represent, including the Port of Spain Corporation, and invited them to come to the table under the process of social dialogue and really look at specific issues that are affecting the workplace um, as a process of trying to find common ground without everybody digressing into a fighting mood all the time. Um, as, it, uh, as we engage in this negotiation, what happened was, this, now this negotiation uh, overdue since 2013. Yeah. Yeah. And when we going into the first meeting, the, the, the key issue that we have, we have is that even though we extended an olive branch, we sat, we sat with the corporation and tried to deal with issues in the workplace. And it, we, they always talk about productivity and the workers want to work and absenteeism. We have sat with them on numerous occasions to get them to deal with that, deal with health and safety issues, deal with what the issues they have. And we have, we have, we have going up against a stone wall, so to speak. You understand? There's a lot of, uh, a lot of procrastination in, in, in this dialogue coming from the employers. And in the negotiation, we saw that um, the, this overdue so long, three years, the government in, in, in power, two years now, a year with the other government, and the CPO's position was that they do have direction from the Minister of Finance as yet. And we found that to be unacceptable because we are here, we are not saying that we're demanding um, X amount of money and we want this high, this, um, a high settlement or any kind of thing like that. But you cannot start by telling us that, listen, there's nothing to talk about to start with as it relates to course. So, so just on that point, so I, just what, now that you, you, you give us a, a sort of an, an overview, what, what are you all going to discuss on Monday? Well, Monday we, we started with non-course items because they say they have no, no direction on course items. But 
we are hoping to see what where it goes from that meeting, where it's going to go from there, because our position, <laughs> and we did say this in the last meeting, that, that we find that to be unacceptable, and we are expecting that they come to the meeting on Monday with a different position. You, in accordance with the Act, you cannot approach collective bargaining in a manner that becomes polarized. You have to understand that, listen, there, there must be maneuverability in the whole process, right? And that is what we are focusing on. We want, and, and it's not only the Port of Spain Corporation, because we have Eastside Plaza, and you see more, they, are, they are state entities as well. And we have other, other um, Bell Groups, you know, who are home and Bermuda, is that we will be approaching by the end of the year. So on a, from a general perspective, we are saying to employers unequivocally that, listen, approach the process of social dialogue and the process of negotiations in a manner that is fair. We understand the economic downturns, but you cannot take a hard and fast position because the workers are suffering just as much as everybody else. Let me bring Mr. Tommy Debreu into the discussion. From, from your perspective, is the union really interested in working with, the, in this case, the city corporation, given the economic realities? Because the argument could be put forward by your members that they need more money, that, that the cost of living, even though the economy is in trouble, the cost of living is not going down. In some cases, it's going up. And therefore, talking about non-cost items is fine, but the, the, the existing terms and conditions, which are long outstanding and should, should have been settled some time ago, <coughs> that they need an increase in, 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 the, in the cost and the financial elements of the, of the negotiation. Okay, Fazi, good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. One of the first things that this new executive took is to write into the different organizations and letting them know, listen, we are about social dialogue, we are about bringing a level of change, a level of normalcy to the, the workplace. And we have engaged them in non-crisis meeting, and some of them has not come on board in terms of meeting and treating with the union. And, and therefore, how would you describe the relationship between the union and the city corporation? How would you, would you describe it right now? Um, I would say it's, it's not very good. It's not very good at all. And that doesn't sound as a, as a healthy environment, Michael Prentice, to be going into a discussion. Well, well first of all, let me say this. We as a union at this point, as a new executive, prepare to work as fast as humanly possible. Four years ago or five years ago, the very said amalgamated workers union when the country had a dilemma down turning the economy and oil price fell and so on what this union would have done is sit with the organization when they call on the union to respond in terms of speaking to the members the corporation have to understand that these are all members but at the end of the day is your workers and the workers work extremely hard and while from a union point of view i could sit here and i wouldn't be deceitful or a hypocrite and I would be blunt in saying that the union can't sit here and act as though we do have problems in, even in the membership that we have. We are not happy as an organization at this point in time because we are not happy with some members in the organization. But by and large, the workers of the Port of Spain Corporation work extremely hard. The workers of the corporation are called upon many times to make sacrifice in many areas and quarters which other people wouldn't even dream to understand. Many a times, the, even the PPE, the gears, protective gears that are supposed to be provided are not provided. Yes. Workers are seen outside in the street without gloves, without respirators, sometimes even without uniform. And first, we have to be brutally frank here. We cannot in the 21st century still ask in workers of the, in this type of environment to be without protective gears. We have, we have made sacrifice numerous times for this organization twice. I recall in the past, we would have made sacrifice where workers would have worked flat time on a weekend, Sundays, public holidays, in order to assist the corporation. We have done that before. But we are not in a position based on the behavior of the corporation at this time. We are not happy with the, the present um, management team of the corporation. We are displeased. Just as we are displeased with some of our members in the union, we are displeased. We feel that um, it's not about asking for, just asking for more, 
but it's asking for workers, and, and it's not the workers' fault in some instances. For as you, we have supervisors that simply not prepared to do the job, not prepared to make the necessary intervention where it is needed in order to ensure that the workers carry out the functions. Michael Prentice, let me just ask you to hold on that for a moment because you have to pause for the news, but we're going to continue the discussion immediately after as we head up towards the 7 o'clock because at, at the end of the day, you, we want to get a sense, even as the union is saying that they are willing to, to work with the city corporation given the economic realities. Uh, if it is, a, 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 as is being said, that the CPU has no directive from government as to how to proceed, what are they going to discuss come, come Monday? Uh, uh, is there going to be an, an environment that will be facilitating uh, negotiation and dialogue, or will it be confrontation? We'll, we'll try to get some sense of that uh, as to what could be further sticking points in the dialogue from Monday. We'll pause for the news coming up now, and then we'll resume our discussion in the second hour of Morning Edition. <laughs>